Hey, um, you can probably tell by the thumbnail that this is, and the title, my long-awaited 100-mile review of the Hoka Mach 6. Uh, it's actually at about 134 miles as of this morning, and um, that's partly uh, delayed because uh, this is also a shoe that I have sort of a complex relationship with. And so I wanted to get a few more runs in to kind of really formulate my thoughts about the shoe. <clears throat> so, first of all, my disclaimer, um, big shout out to uh, Joanna, who is a shoe tuber that if you are not following him, you really should be. Uh, he's got over 16,000 subs as of the making of this video and he's really doing his videos in a way that nobody else is doing them. He does these long form blogs but they're really worth a watch and he puts out videos uh, every single day uh, with quite a significant amount of content because he, he puts up some big miles too. Um, I did a first impressions video on these, and my thoughts have definitely evolved since then. Uh, so, also my disclaimer is that Yoana actually sent me this pair of shoes for free. He had gotten, I think, he bought a pair of the uh, Hoka Mach 6. And then Hoka later sent him a pair, which was this pair. And so he sent these to me because he had already purchased some on his own. And he didn't want to return them because he bought it from his local running shop. And he didn't want to be that guy. Um, so anyways, let me get started. Uh, the upper. Um, not getting too technical here the upper is some kind of an engineered mesh um, it's pretty lightweight in general i don't really have any issues with the material um, my main issue with these shoes is the fit hokas have sort of a narrow fit at least a lot of uh, traditionally a lot of the, the hoka models do and uh, this is no exception. So um, what I ended up doing is, and I just did this the last few runs, and it has helped somewhat, is I, these two, like, bottom two holes, I don't really tighten them up. I, I try to leave them with a lot of slack in them to get so that I'm not snugging down the forefoot too much. And I'm also wearing uh, some of the thinner socks that I own in order to give myself a little bit more room in the forefoot. And I think that has definitely helped. Um, the other issue, though, is that is that hokas tend to have this. A lot of times it, it's it's not a real flat feeling inside it sort of has this bucket seat kind of fit and so I had the same issue with the Bondi uh, Bondi 7s which I actually had those in wide and I still felt like the outside of my foot was being kind of bent up a little bit and so it makes me very aware of the shoe um, I had more issues with the Bondi than I have with this one uh, so this one, because of these little things that I've done, it does make it so that the shoe is runnable. It's, but, but I'm still, I'm still very aware of it. Um, no issues with the laces. The tongue is fine. It's, it's thin. It's, uh, you know, it has this little padding right here, but most of, most of it's not really padded. It looks like it's got a lot of uh, holes for breathability. I don't know. Um, it, I, I haven't had any issues with the feet, with the shoe being too hot. Um, occasionally, I'll feel this 
on my ankle, this little edge here, but it's not really cutting into it. It's not like the Ultra Torrent 5, you know, where people were actually having the thing cut into their ankle because this is a soft material. Um, and it does have a solid heel counter with the elf heel design. No issues with heel lift, no issues with slip. The tongue is gusseted, which has helped because since I'm leaving this real loose and then I'm just snag uh, snugging up like the top three lace holes, but I never felt like my foot is insecure in the shoe. Um, midsole, uh, Running Warehouse lists this at, uh, at uh, 37 in the back and 32 in the front for a five mil drop. And they also listed at 8.3 ounces for a men's size nine, which is pretty light for that amount of stack. Um, they don't feel like a big shoe. They don't feel particularly high stacked. And sometimes that's not everything because say like the, like the Triumph 20 and 21 had a 37 mil stack, but that one, that one seems like a big shoe. The, uh, the midsole is their super critical EVA. It, it's not super soft. It's not soft like a, like a Rebel or, or, or the Adazero SL2 kind of soft. It's not as, not nearly as firm as the, <coughs> as the Hyperion Max, which I also have. Um, it's somewhere in the middle and it's actually really nice balance. Um, I think, you know, I mean, I don't know about my memory, but I think that it felt a little more bouncy right out of the box, but it still has a nice feel, and, and, and because it's not overly soft, it doesn't feel mushy at all, so I, I do think that I can pick up the pace reasonably well in this shoe, although I, you know, I might do some strides, but generally I'm just, I'm just jogging in these shoes. It, 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 to me, shoes like this are, are a daily trainer. Uh, the outsole. So Hoka put a rubber outsole on the Mach 6. You know, that was a big change from the Mach 5. Mach 5 had this dual density kind of um, setup where they had the rubberized EVA on the bottom. And some people complained that it wasn't lasting well. Here you can see this exposed foam is a little bit chewed in places, um, but it's it's really just cosmetic. Overall, like this is my highest wear area right in here, and at 130 miles, it's not bad. It it seems like it's holding up reasonably well. It's it is a pretty thin layer of rubber, but. For me, and, and I tend to get quite a few miles out of a shoe, I think that it's, this shoe, the outsole would probably give me a good four to 500 miles. Um, for somebody who's a heavy heel striker, they might want to be aware of that because they do have all this exposed foam right here. So if that tends to be your high wear area, that's likely to get pretty chewed up. As far as grip, uh, no real issues, but I'm in Southern California. <coughs> uh, it's it usually dry here. I have not really run in the rain in this shoe. So, you know, just a few si uh, sidewalks with, you know, their sprinklers turned on and stuff like that. Haven't had any issues there, but haven't given a good test in the wet. The ride. So... Like I said, the foam is soft enough, but not super soft. It's a really nice balance. Um, it has a very gentle heel-to-toe rocker, and you can kind of see that. I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit and see if you can see this. Um, so if I tip it, you can see that it does have a little bit of that rock back and forth. 
whereas some shoes have a uh, like a real flat bottom and just a four foot rocker um, this one it does have some four foot rocker but it's very gentle so I don't really feel it that much on the run it feels like it has a very smooth transition from heel to toe but it's not the kind of rocker like I would get like in the Hyperion Max. It has a more aggressive four foot rocker that's really tipping me forward. You know, that, that, that stepping off the curb kind of feel. This one doesn't really have that. Um, so I usually run with kind of a quick shuffling cadence. <coughs> and uh, this gentle rocker it does make it easy to do that uh, one thing that I noticed though as you know now that I've dealt with that issue with the with the forefoot and like I said I do still feel that bucket seat kind of feel in there but if you look at the inside the inside has substantial support here and the outside see there's kind of like even like a little cutout here it's it's a lot less whereas here it comes all the way all the way out it doesn't really taper in doesn't have any kind of a narrow waist and so in doing so I feel like the shoe makes me supinate a little bit um, so if you're an over pronator this might work well for you I tend to be pretty neutral and so I think that's part of what I'm feeling is that it's causing me to supinate just a little bit and of course I do have a, a pretty light foot strike so somebody who's compressing foam more might not notice this as much but it's doing that and then it's also pushing me onto this side so that's just something to be aware of um, so what do I like about the shoe? It feels light on foot. Anything like, like close to eight ounces, uh, you know, anywhere from like seven to eight and a half ounces, feels pretty light. It's got these great heel to toe transitions that would probably work well for just about any foot strike. <coughs> It's got a reasonably soft and bouncy foam and it's giving me I I feel like I've got plenty of protection underfoot and at $140 retail it's not bad it's not bad I, I would probably I, I would probably run this shoe over a lot of you know bulkier max cushion shoes you know that are up in the in the $160 price range uh, dislikes as I pr pretty much mentioned, it's just the, the fit and, you know, it, it's that. And, and, and I feel like I've kind of got the fit sorted out, but that little bucket seat kind of feel in the bottom. <coughs> and then also that, uh, that, that thicker... Uh, medial part that makes me supinate a little bit um, it feels a little bit light under the forefoot even though it's got 32 mils of stack so uh, you know it's it's not really problematic for me but just to be aware of uh, other lightweight trainers uh, as alternatives uh, would be shoes like the Odyssey SL2, the New Balance Rebel, the Asics Nusa Tri 16, um, the Brooks Hyperion Max, and now the, it's really the Hyperion 2, not the Hyperion Max 2, that is the, the successor to the Hyperion Max. Uh, those are all kind of within the same price range. And if you're a bigger runner or if you're doing really long runs and you want a lot of stack underfoot, then for 140 bucks, um, you might want to go for something like the Nova Blast 4. 
Um, between a lot of these lightweight trainers, I think a lot of the main difference is, is the personal preference as far as the fit and the ride. Um, I have the Rebel V3, I don't have the 4. Um, for more time on feet, I kind of prefer the, the SL2 <coughs> because uh, that shoe feels like it has more cushion under the forefoot. Um, usually I'm asking myself, so for casual, I ask what I wear them for work because I, I, I am a nurse and so I do spend a lot of time on feet during my shifts. Um, the foam is good, but I would say no because of the fit because I'm just very aware <coughs> of the pressure that I get on the outside of my foot. Uh, and whether it's, whether it's because of the bucket seat kind of design or that, or, or, or that, that, you know, a more substantial uh, foam on, on the medial side of the foot, that it does make me very aware of the shoe and very aware of the side of my foot. If you tried other Hoka shoes and you're perfectly fine with the fit, then you should be fine. I don't know if this foam will last 12 hour shifts day after day without flattening out, so I can't really speak to that. Um, would I buy these again? Um, I probably would not. Overall, it's a good shoe, and if if Hocus fit you well, and they just have a good step in comfort for your foot shape, then you know I have nothing. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about that. It just doesn't fit me well enough. It's not comfortable enough. Um, So I think that's all I've got for today, and uh, I hope I was off, able to offer some value, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. I have a couple more shoes that I've gotten already up over 100 miles, but I've just been pretty busy and haven't had a chance to put out a video. All right, so, you know, like if you liked the video. Uh, you know, feel free to comment. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay? Thank you.